Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with another After Effects tutorial for you to have a go at. Now, if you've watched the preview file already, you'll know what we're aiming for here. Um, but if not, as you can see, we're creating a really simple um, program loading screen. Now, uh, the project file is already up on my website at shortformvideo.com for you to download and use as you will. And uh, as I mentioned in the description for the preview, it's fully procedural. So if you want to take your own text and drop it in, it'll be reflected in the final project. So uh, if you want to just go and grab that and download it and do what you like with it, you're more than welcome. But if you'd like to know how to create it, then that's what we're going to do. So let's create a new project and a new composition. So we'll call this one Globar. And uh, as usual, I'm using the 720p PAL preset, and we're going to set it f to uh, 15 seconds long, and just hit OK. Now, with the composition frame selected, tap the apostrophe key just to bring up the uh, title guides, and then go to your pen tool, turn off the fill, and then make sure that the stroke is a solid color, and we'll set the stroke value to 70 pixels. I'm also going to select a uh, medium grey for the colour for now, but we'll change that shortly. So take your pen tool and just at the edge of the inside frame, click once, hold down shift and click twice at the other side of the frame and it'll create a nice thick stroke. That's all we need to do there. Now go to your shape layer that you've just created Twirl down the properties and find the stroke value. Change the butt cap to round cap and that'll just round it off nicely as you can see there. Now we'll just call this glow bar so we know what we're doing. And I'll turn off the title guides. Okay, so the first step is to add a few effects to this to make it look a little bit more like a, a glassy bar. So uh, right click, select layer styles, and go to inner glow. In the inner glow options, select white as your color, and increase the size to about 20. Right click again, go to layer styles and select bevel and emboss. Twill down the bevel properties, leave it at inner bevel, and up, and increase the size to about 35. And already you can see um, our glassy bar is starting to shape up. Next thing we're going to do, go back to layer styles again, click on stroke, and change the default to white and drop the size down to 1 and we'll just turn the position from outside to inside and that'll do for now. Um, I'm going to create a new composition and we'll set it to 100 by 100 and I'll call it color control just hit OK select your rectangle tool and double click to create a default rectangle I'm going to turn the stroke value off and the fill on and we'll set the, uh, the color to a nice magenta and hit OK and I'm going to grab the handle for the composition and drag it to the side. This means I can now create an effect on the glow bar composition and refer it to the color reference that we've got here. So. Go to your effects and presets panel, find the tritone effect, drag it onto your glow bar, twirl down the effects properties until you see the midtones value. Hold down Alt and click on the stopwatch to create a, an expression keyframe. Grab the pick whip and just drag that over to the color you created in your shape layer in the color control um, composition and just hit OK. 
Now when we go back to the glow bar, you can see that uh, it's changed to reflect that. Basically now that means we can uh, change the color value to anything we like and it'll be reflected in the, uh, in the glow bar. So color control has done its job. We can close that down now. Okay, gonna create another new composition. And we'll call this progress comp. Just turn the uh, 720p preset back on and hit OK. Now grab your glow bar and drag two instances of it into the progress comp composition. Name the bottom one glow bar progress and the top one glow bar static. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the visibility off for the bottom layer and select the top layer then hit Control Shift and N to create a new mask, and then immediately Control T to bring up the transform values for that. Grab the right hand handle for the mask, and we're just going to drag it to the beginning of the glow bar. With the uh, static glow bar comp selected, tap F to bring up the feather properties, and we'll feather it by about 20 pixels. Now I'm going to turn the visibility back on for the glow bar underneath it. And as you can see, it's a fairly seamless join. So our next step is to uh, create the moving uh, progress bar. So with the glow bar progress comp selected, hit P to bring up the position values. And with the timeline indicator at the beginning of the timeline, create a new keyframe by clicking on the position stopwatch and drag the X value to move the glow bar across until it just creates that starting sphere that you can see here. So in my case, that's uh, minus 510 on the X axis. Now we're gonna to go to the 10 second mark and I'll just drag the glow bar back across to the 640 pixel mark and as you can see, that's automatically created a new keyframe. So now when I scroll through the timeline, you can see we've got our progress bar motion here. But obviously there's a bit of a problem. It's running off the edge of the screen, which is not something that we want. So go back to your glow bar composition and find the glow bar shape that you created. And just hit Control C to copy it. Then go back to your progress comp and hit Control V to paste that shape layer into your new composition. Twill down the properties and just delete the layer styles. Delete the tritone effect. Find the stroke properties and set the color from mid gray to solid white. We'll rename this Luma Matte. What I'm gonna do now is select the glow bar static and glow bar progress layers. Hit Control Shift and C to pre-compose them. We'll call this progress pre-comp. Move all the attributes into the new composition and hit OK. Now, if you're using the default view, which is this, tap F4 to bring up the track mat properties. Hit the drop down menu and select Luma Mat, Luma Mat. And that will use the shape layer that we've just created as a track mat for the uh, whole pre-comp. So now when I scrub through the timeline, you'll see that we've lost that uh, overhang that we had earlier. Okay, so create a brand new composition. We'll call this final comp. Hit okay. Now I'm gonna bring in um, a predefined texture but obviously you can use anything you like. We'll drop it in, just rescale it because it's uh, larger than it needs to be. And pre-comp it. Background texture pre-comp. Move all the attributes across and hit OK. Go back to your progress comp, 
find the luma mat shape layer that you created earlier, hit Control and C, and paste it into your final comp with Control and V, and don't forget to turn the visibility for it back on. Select the drop down menu and again select luma mat and select the luma mat layer and just hit OK. And that'll punch out the uh, background texture using the luma mat as a reference. Right click, go to layer styles and select bevel and emboss. Twill down the bevel and emboss properties and select direction down and increase the value to 35 again. And that'll just give us an invert, uh, a recessed slot for the uh, glow bar to sit in. Now, uh, just to fill in the background, I'll grab the background texture pre-comp and drag that in. Might just tart this up a bit. Um, select the track matted pre-comp, the one with the bevel and emboss on it. Go to layer styles and stroke. Change it from red to white. Change the size to 1 and the opacity to 50%. And that'll just uh, sharpen those edges to really sell the effect. I might also grab the curves effect and drag that onto our basic background layer and pull down the top end to darken it all off a bit. Okay, back in our project uh, panel. Grab your progress comp and drop it on the top. If I scrub through, you can see that uh, it's working pretty well. But I'd like to uh, add a couple more things before we finish. Right click on the progress comp, go to layer styles and outer glow. Now this is where the uh, color um, control object can come in handy. So double click the color control to open it, grab the handle again, drag it to the side. And in the outer glow color type, make sure a single color is selected. Hit, hold down Alt and click on the color stopwatch, grab the pick whip and drag it onto the color value in our color control layer. Now I'm going to set opacity to 100 and the size to 20. Actually, you might take the opacity back down again, 75%. And we'll leave it at that. Close the color control again. And there's just one more thing I'd like to add. Go to your effects and presets panel and find CC light sweep and just drag that onto the progress comp. In the effect controls panel, set uh, the center. Now you can drag it down so it uh, sits in the middle or you can just uh, enter 360 on the Y. Pull the timeline indicator to the beginning of your timeline and uh, type in 1280, which is the uh, far right hand edge of our project frame. And then click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. And while I'm here, I'm also going to set the direction to zero and the shape to linear. Now advance the timeline indicator to the, si the two second mark. Go to the center value and type in zero. Now if I scrub through that first couple of seconds, you'll see that the light wipe passes over the bar in the opposite direction and just brightens everything up as it goes. So I'm going to twirl down the progress comp and then find the light wipe effect, sorry the light sweep effect where I created these two keyframes and we're just going to loop those by holding down alt, clicking on the stopwatch again and typing loop out open brackets close brackets and clicking somewhere else to finish it all off. Now when I scrub through the entire project, you'll see we've got this repeating light pulse traveling from the right hand side of the screen to the left hand side of the screen. Now if you want to adjust the uh, speed, just open up your progress pre-comp that you created earlier. And we'll create another couple of keyframes at the four second mark. And we'll copy and paste that to the 
seven second mark. So it just hits four seconds, stands still, and then carries on to the 10 second mark. Now when you go back to the final comp, you'll see that that is now reflected in the final composition. Now you can add a couple more things to the uh, the progress comp bar. Um, maybe select an inner glow. Set it to white and increase the size and drop down the opacity, maybe down to 50. And don't forget we have the color control option so you can always change the color to something more vibrant and automatically be updated. Okay, so that's it. I mean, if you wanted to do the uh, text, it's just a question of um, using the same uh, Luma Matte option that we did. Um, but frankly, um, if you followed through the tutorial this far, you'll already know how to do it. And if you don't, you can always go and grab the project file from my website at shortformvideo.com and just drop your text in from there. As always, I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.